God and we give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise on today. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. There's a word from the Lord today. I'm excited about the word that God has given us. My prayer is that this word will fall on good ground. Just before we spend time in the word, I want to say congratulations. Congratulations to our very own member, George Snelling. Uh, George Snelling married the love of his life, Ola. Hallelujah. Picture is being displayed right now. We thank God for Brother George, member of our male chorus, faithful member of our congregation. He is married to the love of his life now, and we celebrate their union. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's preaching time. It's preaching time. We're continuing in our series, Light in the Darkness. I pray that this series has been encouraging to you. I pray it has been challenging where challenge is needed. I pray it has been convicting where conviction is needed. And today we're going to go back to that first chapter in John, the first chapter in John, and we're going to start right there at the ninth verse. The first chapter in John, we're going to start right at the ninth verse. As you're finding it now in your digital Bible, your hard copy Bible, or you can follow along on the screen. John chapter one, starting at the ninth verse. Let us whisper a word of prayer now before our Father. God, we honor you. Thank you that you are the Son of God. We glorify you, God, for this privilege that we have to receive your truth. God, we recognize we cannot live through our own ingenuity and charisma and gifting alone. God, we need your word. And so I thank you now for nourishing our spiritual beings with the bread of heaven. Our prayer, Lord, is that you will feed us. Feed us with spiritual food this morning that we may live in the light of the gospel, that we may live in your truth. Anoint me afresh from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Give me preaching power. We thank you in advance for saving souls. We thank you in advance for reclaiming those who have fallen away. We glorify you in Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's children say amen. Let all of God's children say amen again. John chapter 1, the ninth verse, you'll find these words, the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did received him, receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. I want to continue in our series, Light in the Darkness. And we focus our attention this morning on the sermonic subject, I refuse to be dimmed. I refuse to be dimmed. My brothers and sisters, have you ever seen someone who started so well, yet finished so poorly. I mean, they got off to a good start, a very strong stride. Then that strong stride dwindled into 
a trot. Then that slow trot became a walk. And then that walk became just standing still. And as we look at them go from this strong stride to standing still, we may be inclined to ask, what, what happened to them? What, what happened to their zeal? What happened to their enthusiasm? What happened to their joy? What happened to their faith? What happened to them? Sometimes when we see this, we may be inclined and quick to judge them. Some may judge them for a lack of tenacity. Others may judge them for a lack of follow through. And sometimes we may be quick to dismiss them. Sometimes we'll look at them and say, that's just typical. Sometimes we may be inclined to look past them and search for another because we look at them and say, that's just what people do. But I believe that in many of these instances, if we could have a conversation with them, if we could have a conversation with the person who starts so well but finishes so poorly, we might just discover that they became jaded. <laughs> that they, they are dull, they are drab and dry, and it is really because they are jaded and they have become discouraged. Here it is, the visitor came to church one day in desperate need of transformation in their lives, in desperate need of change, frustrated by their many failed attempts to try to fix themselves. Then they heard the gospel. They heard about Jesus Christ and decided that they would put their trust in Jesus to be their help, their deliverer, and the one who rescues them from sin. Everyone that is reading along with us in Adam Hamilton's Inc incarnation rediscovering the significance of Christmas you know he says Jesus rescues us from sin a meaningless life and death and the preacher told them Jesus would rescue them from sin they put their trust in Jesus and the preacher said not only are you now connected to Jesus but you're also connected to a family the family of God and this family will love you. This family will challenge you to be all that God has created you to be. This family will help you and support you. Yet the closer they became to the family, the more connected they became to the family. They experienced discord and division. They are torn down instead of built up. They are hated instead of help. Their zeal as a result is in this individual wanes their participation becomes marginal at one time they were participating in worship coming to church and praising God and then you look up and nobody sees them anymore and I believe that beside their name you might see the hashtag church hurt they became jaded but I want you to know that this is not just something that people in the pew are susceptible to. This is not just something that affects laity, but it also affects those who stand behind this sacred desk, those who stand in the pulpit because they say yes to God, yes to God's work. Start out with so much zeal and passion and commitment, but then somewhere along the line, they lose their passion and their commitment and are consumed with so many other things and we wonder what happened to them. Some people judge them as incompetent and negligent and apathetic leaders, but if we would listen to their stories, 
we might discover that they experienced so many unnecessary battles that they became jaded. As they were focusing on the word, they discovered that not everyone has an interest in following the word of God, even in the church. So they became jaded. They were lied on. Their good was evil spoken of. Their families were neglected. They lived under so much scrutiny. And like Moses, they had to sojourn through the wilderness with murmuring and complaining people so they come to a point in ministry where they now lift up their hands and say God I'm done with this they are jaded someone listening to me right now you, you know what it is to be jaded you, you might not fall into the first two categories you might not be a jaded church member or a jaded church leader, but you are jaded in your life. Your generosity has been taken advantage of one too many times. Your kindness has been mistaken for weakness one too many times. You've had too many relationship struggles to keep on trying. You've been experienced now. You've experienced your fair share of struggles and rejection and problems. And as a result, now you are jaded. You've been battered, you've been tossed, you've been driven by the cares and the snares and the storms of life one too many times. And so as a result, you're, you're jaded. You were once effervescent and, and, and you were a ball of energy and full of joy. And, and when you walked into the room, everybody saw you smile. They enjoyed your presence. But now you're like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. You're always sullen. You're always dejected. And when you come around, you bring a cloud of sorrow with, with you. You were once trusting, but now you're quick tempered. You were once praising God for the many blessings that he gave you in your life. But now you are complaining. You were once generous. But now you are tight fisted. You were once heaven exalting, but now you are hell raising. You were once courageous. But now you are fearful. You were once open to new ideas and open to new possibilities. But now you live closed minded. You were once joyful. But now you are jaded. You were once a bright light. But now your light is dim. It's from this vantage point, people being jaded by what happens to them in life, to the point where their unique light is dimmed by the difficulties that they experience in life. It is from this vantage point that I want to look at the miracle of Christ coming to earth and fulfilling his purpose. You see, one, one of the great disservices, I believe, of the superficial celebration of Christmas is that there's so much sensationalism and sentimentality in our uh, celebration of Christmas that we may be inclined to forget that this was tension and conflict and warfare that is present even as Jesus is entering the world. You, you know how we do around this time of the year. We celebrate Christmas with so much sentimentality and sensationalism. We have our cute little angels and sweet manger scenes and calming Christmas music and scintillating lights and Christmas cookies and cute pictures of sweet baby Jesus and we come to that manger just cooing at sweet baby Jesus and in this cute celebration we forget that Jesus is actually experiencing a demotion in position when he comes he, he's the only person to leave the perfection of heaven and come to the problems of earth. Most of us, we are on earth with expectation of going to heaven. Jesus leaves heaven and enters into the world. Here it is. He left 
perfect worship and entered into a world that was full of hate. He left the perfectly pristine aura of heaven and came into the petty and problematic world. He left the majestic glory of heaven and entered the mess of the earth. He left heaven and came came to earth. And, and that means he came and experienced the tension. He came and experienced the strife. He, he came and experienced the agony and the grief and the sorrow and the pain of living in the world. And can I tell you, this is where John helps us in our celebration of Christmas. Because unlike Matthew, and unlike Luke, John does not discuss the incarnation and include mangers and shepherds and angels. John, John doesn't include any of that. John says, I want you to know that when you look at that manger, you are looking at Warfare. John speaks of the incarnation and says that when the Son of God became flesh, it is a battle. It is a battle between good and evil. It is a battle between right and wrong. It is a battle between light and darkness. John looks at the manger and says this is a miracle because God loved us so much that he left heaven and came to earth to do warfare on our behalf. John says the light shines in the, in the darkness. And here it is, by virtue of the fact that this is a battle, it, it means that when we come to the manger, the baby in the manger was destined to experience the wounds of warfare. It, it, it means that he was destined to, to experience the hurts and the pains and the sorrows of warring against the sordid and sinful world. It, it means, my brothers and sisters, that he had some tears to shed and he had some lonely nights and he had some difficulties that he faced. Here it is. Isaiah puts it like this in the 53rd chapter of his prophetic book. He says in the third verse, he says, surely he has borne our sorrows and carried our griefs. Yet we considered him smitten and stricken by God and afflicted. But thanks be unto God that he was wounded for my transgressions and he was bruised for my iniquities and the chastisement of my peace was upon him and thanks be unto God he suffered because by his stripes we are healed when he came he entered into warfare and this is what John is saying in the passage that I left for our consideration this morning he says that the true light the light who gives light to everyone was entering the world here it is he was in the world the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, yet his own people did not receive him. Don't, don't miss this. He starts off and says he is the true light. He, he is the essence of perfection and Power. He is the true light. He is the essence of perfection and power. Don't miss this. He is the true light. This is Jesus, my brothers and sisters. This is the one who is equal to God. This is the one that 1 Timothy 6.16 6, says, dwelt in unapproachable light. This is the one that was perfect in holiness. This is the one that is full of grace and truth. This is the one that 
that is perfect in love. This is the one that is matchless in might. This is the one that is awesome in power. This is the one that is incomparably greater than anyone else because he's equal with God. He is the true light. Now, not, not, not only does he say he's the true light, but, but, but I thank God because he says he is the true light that gives light to everyone else. Here it is. He doesn't need anyone to power him up. He, he doesn't need to be plugged into any outlet. He's never at risk of going dead. His light is never at risk of going at, out. In fact, he doesn't need anybody to supply his power, but he is the power supply of every other light. He gives light to everyone. He is true for everyone. He is the way for everyone. He is God's choice for everyone. He is the true light that gives light to everyone, he, he, he's just presenting his resume. He says he's the true light that gives light to everyone. Not only that, but just in case you missed it in Genesis 1, he was there. <laughs> he, he is the one who created the world. He is the one who created all things. John says for everything that was made. What was made by his hands. It, it, if it's walking, he gave it legs. If it's talking, he gave it its tongue. If it's thinking, he gave it its mind. Here it is, my brothers and sisters. Everything that was made, he is the one that made it. He is the great creator and sustainer of the universe. What a resume. That this is the one that is in that manger. That this is the one that is born king. Yet. Even as he is the essence of perfection and power, he experiences pain. He's the essence of perfection and power, yet he experiences pain. If there was anyone that I would expect to get through life Without the normal scrapes and cuts and bruises that uh, we experience, it would be Jesus. I mean, he's perfect in love. He, he's perfect in holiness. If there was anyone that I would expect to get through life without enemies, it would be Jesus. If there was anyone that I would expect to not have to experience the consequences of the dark world, certainly it would be the true light. Yet John says the exact opposite was true. Jesus, the true light, experiences great pain and great struggle. What pain are you talking about, John? John says he was misunderstood. He, 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 he came and he lived in the world. He made the world. Yet the world did not know him. This no here is they didn't understand him. They did not recognize him. They did not acknowledge him. He was in the world and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. And all throughout John's gospel, this tension of the creator and sustainer of the universe not being known by the world is presented. Look at John 3. John 3, Nicodemus, you remember that great teacher that comes to him by night. Jesus is teaching him about what true salvation is, being born from above. And the Bible says initially Nicodemus did not understand him. John chapter 8 verse 52 says they didn't understand him so much so that they accused him of having a demon. John chapter 12, verse 16, his own disciples didn't understand some things until he was glorified. 
John chapter 16, verse 3, it says that Jesus, his persecution and the persecution that the disciples would experience was a result of them not knowing Jesus and not knowing the Father. Do you see it? He's the creator of the universe, yet they don't recognize his glory. He's the sustainer of the world, yet they overlook him because of where he's from. He is the creator of the universe, the sustainer of the world, full of grace and truth, yet his life is soiled by scandalous lies. They did not acknowledge his lordship. They called him everything other than the son of God said that he was filled with the devil. They said that this true light was controlled by the darkness. That's suffering. Somebody who was accustomed to the praise of angels now experiencing the derision of of people who don't understand him. Not, not only that, the Bible says, that a part of his suffering, John says, he was rejected. Now, John qualifies, it says, he wasn't just rejected, he was rejected by his own. You know, rejection is always painful, but it's exceedingly painful when you've been rejected by your own. John says he came to his own. And if there is anyone that you would expect to accept you, it would be your own. He came to his own, yet his own did not receive him. Can, can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, there were people in his own family, his own brothers, people who sat at his table with him that did not believe him. They thought that he was crazy. His own people rejected him. People that looked like him and talked like him and lived next to him. People, my brothers and sisters, that professed to serve the God that he was devoting his life to as he lived on the earth. He was rejected by his own, just in case you missed this, John emphasizes it. In John chapter 7, his own people sought to kill him. And as a result, he had to monitor his travel. In John chapter 6, verse 41, his own people grumbled about him when he taught that he was the bread of heaven. In John chapter 5, verse 10, his own people criticize his ministry of healing because they didn't like the fact that he was healing on the Sabbath. John chapter 5 verse 18, his own people hated the fact that he claimed to be equal with God. John chapter 8 verse 48, his own people called him a scum and told him he was demon possessed. His own people did not receive him. Come here, come here, come here. I got a question for you. Got a question for you. Got a question for you. Here it is. Here it is. If Jesus was misunderstood, if Jesus was unacknowledged. If Jesus, the light of God, the son of God, was unrecognized and rejected by his own. Here's my question. What makes you think that you're going to be understood by everybody all the time? What makes you think that people will acknowledge who you are all the time. What makes you think that people will recognize your merit and want to elevate and promote you based upon what you have done and your history? What makes you think that you are going to be accepted by everyone all the time? Listen, when you are rejected, when you are misunderstood, when you are criticized, when you are overlooked, when you are not acknowledged, when you are not recognized, here is what I want you to remember. The same thing happened 
happen to Jesus, which means there will be times, my brothers and sisters, where people will misunderstand you. There will be times where people talk about you and they don't even know you. There will be times when you will be overlooked. There will be times when you don't receive what your merit deserves. There will be times where you are rejected. There will be times where you are not accepted, not just by strangers, but by your own people, by your own family, by your own so-called friends, by your own people that you tried to support, by your own kinfolk, by your own people. There will be times where you experience some pain, some hurts. You're going to have some tears to shed. You'll have some frustration. And just in case you missed this, John says that, that in this world, you will have trouble. But, but take heart because I've already overcome the world. John says, Jesus in John's gospel says that if the world hated me in this conflict and warfare, then those who are following me, those who are seeking to do my will, those who are walking in my light in this dark world, they will be hated as well. Ultimately, he's saying that you need to put some steel in your back. You need to have some fortitude and some tenacity in your body and in your spirit and say, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to keep on following Jesus. Jesus, despite the fact that I'm not acknowledged, despite the fact that I'm not recognized, despite the fact that I'm hated on, despite the fact that they call me everything but a child of God, listen, I'm going to keep on doing what God desires for my life. Here it is. I said all that to say to get to this point. Here is what strikes me. Here is what strikes me, and I don't want you to miss this. Despite all the pain that he experienced, despite the rejection, despite being misunderstood, Jesus never lived jaded. He never allowed his light to be dimmed. Uh, th th this blesses me and it challenges me at the same time. Because despite how much people try to discredit him, despite how much rejection he experienced, despite the fact that he was misunderstood and they did not acknowledge him, his light remained the same. Can, can I tell you, um, this is important because I believe that sometimes what the adversary seeks to do is to dim our lights through the difficulties that we experience. You see, in my house, I, I have some dimmable lights. And, and there's a switch like you might have in your house. And if you go over to the switch, the light that is extremely bright, all you have to do is just take it down a little bit. And that bright light that can be blinding becomes extremely dull. So to the point that it doesn't even have much impact in the room as it relates to the darkness that is all around it. You can barely see it. And can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, I think that sometimes the adversary is using the difficulties that you experience, the frustration and the pain and the hurt and the rejection and the criticism. He is using it to try to dim the light that you are. Here it is. They malign your character. That's the enemy trying to turn it down. They abuse you. That's the enemy trying to turn it down. They seek to harm you. That's the enemy trying to turn it down. They reject you. That's the enemy trying to turn it down. And before you know it you're barely shining you were once a bright light and now you have been dim but this is what blesses me that Jesus lived in such a way that he said 
I refuse to be dimmed. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Matter of fact, right now in the comment section, you ought to just type that right now. Based upon the example of Jesus, I refuse to be dimmed. Can I tell you, when I looked at that manger and that baby who came as the radiant glory of God, and then I look at Calvary and see that the radiance in the manger is the same radiance at Calvary. Can I tell you, 33 years years is a long time to try to have the adversary dimming your light but thanks be unto God he lived with a tenacity and a faith to say I refuse to be dim hallelujah he didn't stop loving folks and healing folks and saving folks just because of the adversary's attempts to try to discredit him no he kept on healing even as they kept on complaining that he was doing it on the Sabbath he kept kept on healing. He kept on doing what God called him to do. He didn't stop preaching because people misunderstood his teaching and thought he was crazy. He kept going on mountaintop and mountaintop and boat to boat preaching and proclaiming the word of almighty God. Jesus said that despite what I've got to face, I'm going to keep on doing what God has called me to do because God has given me a light to shine in the darkness. God has given me a light to break yokes and break chains in this dark world. God has given me a voice and there is no way that I'm allow the enemy to silence and mute my voice because God has made me a light. Here, here it is. He didn't stop living just because people wanted him dead. <laughs> that, that's a word for somebody. That's a word for somebody right now because there's some people in your life that if it were up to them, you wouldn't be here right now. Can I tell you, but don't be so consumed with the people who want you gone. Listen, if God wakes you up in the morning and, and breathes fresh mercy upon you and breathes fresh grace upon you, can I tell you, you ought to not stop living. You ought to continue to do what God has called you to do and thanks be unto God that God will give you the energy. God will give you the strength to keep on shining. Yeah, that's what I want to say to you today, child of God. Don't let your light be dim. Keep on shining. When they reject you, keep on shining. When they talk about you, keep on shining. When they criticize and persecute you, keep on shining. When they try to do harm to you, keep on shining. Have some tenacity in your spirit to say I'm going to keep on shining. I wonder if I've got anybody here this morning that says I'm going to keep on shining. Can I tell you, can I tell you, here it is. You got to be an anyway Christian. Uh, this, this is getting good to me. You got to be an anyway Christian. Here, here it is, here it is. In, in, in Mother Teresa's home that she had for children, they found this on her wall. Don't miss it. Uh, if you are kind to people, they'll accuse you of ulterior motives, but be kind anyway. <laughs> if you are successful, you'll have some false friends and some true enemies, but succeed anyway. If you are honest, people may cheat you, but be honest Anyway, when you spend years building something, someone can come and destroy it overnight, but keep on building anyway. The good that you do today, people will often forget about it tomorrow, but keep on doing good anyway. Give the world your best, and it may not ever be enough, but don't stop giving your best. Keep on giving your best anyway. I wonder if I've got some anyway Christians in the house this morning that say despite everything that may come at me, I'm going to keep on shining anyway. Is there anybody here that says I'm going to keep on doing God's will anyway? I'm going to keep on walking in God's purpose anyway. I'm going to keep on testifying and speaking of his goodness anyway. I'm going to keep on believing and praying and trusting his name anyway. I'm going to keep on speaking and 
doing what God wants me to do anyway. Is there anybody here that says despite what the adversary tries, despite the weapons that may be formed against you, is there anybody that says I'm going to keep on walking in the will of God anyway? Do I have anybody that says anyway, anyway, anyway? Here it is. Here, here. Can, can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you why you need to be an anyway Christian? Here it is. You know why you ought to keep on shining anyway. You, ought, you, you, you know why you can't let your light be dimmed and you got to keep on shining anyway. Here it is. Because despite what the adversary may try. Despite the bad that he may try to use to dim your light, here's what I discovered that God has a way of bringing good in the face of the bad. I wonder if I've got anybody here this morning that can be a living witness that says God has a way of bringing good in the face of the bad. Isn't that what Joseph said? His brothers threw him in a pit, sold him into slavery, but did not God elevate him? And the next time they met him, they thought that he was going to take vengeance out on them. They thought that he was going to try to get even with them, but no. He looked at them and said, what you meant for evil? God has turned it around and worked it together for my good. And can I tell you, that's exactly what John is saying. Because if you look at after talking about the pain of Jesus right there in verse 12, it says, but to all who did receive him, to all who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God do you see it my brothers and sisters this is what John is saying they rejected him for evil they talked about him for evil. They put nails in his hands for evil. They put nails in his feet for evil. They put a crown of thorns on his head for evil. They did all of that for evil. But because he kept on shining, because he kept on serving God, because he kept on praying and talking to the Father, despite what they did, God blessed him anyway. <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to but can I tell you if you are in any way Christian despite what they may try can I tell you God is gonna bless you anyway because the Lord helped him to fulfill his purpose as the sons and daughters of God and the family of God expanded because he helped him to fulfill his purpose despite the pain that he had to experience and somebody here this morning all of the sons and all of the daughters of God you ought to thank God that he kept on shining can I tell you why because I'm saved because he kept on shining you're saved because he kept on shining we're God's children because he kept on shining. I'm so glad that he kept on shining. Can I tell you why? His rejection is my acceptance. His suffering is my peace. His curse is my blessing. His, his sorrow is my joy. Is there anybody that says his death is my life? I'm so glad 
light that he kept on shining. I got to let you go. But is there anybody that says I refuse? I refuse to be dimmed. I refuse to allow the adversary to dim my light. I refuse to allow the enemy to make me hot and put my light under a basket. I refuse to allow the adversary to dim the light that God has given me. I'm going to keep on shining and doing God's will anyway. I got to let you go. But can I tell you, if you're in any way Christian, will you lift your hands wherever you are and say, Lord, I thank you for strengthening me. I thank you for empowering me. Will you lift up your other hand and say, Lord, I thank you that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Will you lift up your other hand and say, God, I thank you that despite the trouble, you promise to keep me in perfect peace if I keep my eyes and my mind stayed on you. So here's what I want you to do. Now that you've got your left hand lifted, now that you've got your right hand lifted, say, God, Anyway, you want to bless me. Anyway, you want to use me. Anyway, you want to work through me. Have your way in my life. I surrender all. I surrender all. Honor Jesus. Oh to Jesus, I said, oh to Jesus, I surrender, oh to him, I freely give, I, I said, I will ever love and trust him, hallelujah, anyway, Lord, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Say yeah. I, 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 I refuse to be dimmed. I refuse to be dimmed. Come on, come on. You ought to speak that over yourself right now. I refuse to be dimmed. I, I, I have to live in a dark and difficult world and sometimes I experience the rejection. Sometimes I'm misunderstood. So sometimes I'm unacknowledged and disregarded. Sometimes I'm overlooked, but that's okay. I refuse to be dim. Listen, the purpose that God has placed on your life. You will not get from receiving the call to fulfilling the call without some obstacles and some difficulties. Because the adversary wants you to dim your light. He will try everything in his power to silence your voice. He will try everything in his power to stop you from walking in what God has purposed for your life. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody right now, you've grown weary, you've grown tired, and as a result, you got off the field, you went to the sidelines, you sat down on the bench. It's, 
it's the time right now, right now, right now, today, today, today. It's time for you to get up off the bench. It's time for you to dust yourself off, pray and get back on the field doing what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Somebody here that you've been knocked down, but it's time for you to get up. Hallelujah. Somebody here right now, you've been so consumed with what the adversary is trying to do to you that you've forgotten what God is doing for you and through you despite what the adversary is trying to do. Hallelujah. Somebody here right now, you need to begin to affirm your faith this morning on this last Sunday before Christmas as you look at that manger thanks be unto God that even though he entered the world and he experienced warfare, his light was not dimmed. And so I want you to be strengthened. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to have some tenacity and grab a scripture, grab a word. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Grab a word that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, your Lord. Grab a word this morning and get back up and say all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and of the court according to his purpose. Grab a word right now and say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Grab a word this morning and get back up and fulfill the work that God has called you to do. Don't let your light be dim. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that you are the true light that gives light to everyone. Father, we, we honor you, we celebrate you, we magnify you, we bow in reverence and humble submission to you right now. Thank you for your example, Jesus. They talked about you, they called you a devil, they criticized you because you healed on the Sabbath, they rejected you, they misunderstood you, they overlooked you, they did not recognize the radiance of your glory, they crucified you, but because you remain faithful, mm, hallelujah, because your light was not dim, thanks be unto God that on that third day you were risen from the dead and you live forever and you have a name above every name. Thank you, Jesus. We are your sons and your daughters. We are the sons and the daughters of God because you did not allow your light to be dimmed. And so I pray now in the name of Jesus that we will not be dimmed, that we will let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven, that we will walk in the light as you are in the light. I pray in the name of Jesus that we will walk with courage, that we will walk with strength, giving you all the praise and the honor that is due your name. And we know that the adversary is a liar, that the devil is defeated. Hallelujah. You already disarmed him. And so, God, we walk and we claim and we walk in the victory that you have already won for us. We honor you. We praise you. It's in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus that we do pray. Let all of God's children say amen. Come on and celebrate Jesus today. Let all of God's children say amen. Come on in the comment section. Affirm your faith today. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Be strengthened in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining us in worship. Our hope is that the worship experience was a blessing to you and an encouragement for you on your faith journey. In scripture, darkness is used as a metaphor for that which opposes God's perfect will, ignorance, and afflictions in life. Darkness, metaphorically, is synonymous with emotional death, physical death, and spiritual death. This year, we have been experiencing darkness in just about every form. However, the hope of Advent is that Christ is the light in our darkness. Christ is the hope in hopeless circumstances. Christ is joy in sorrow. Christ is peace in chaos. Christ is love in the midst of hate. If you're watching and you do not have a relationship with Jesus, I want to invite you to take the first step by making the life-changing decision to accept Jesus as your Savior. Simply text BGC New Life to 
8787. And we'll send you a Zoom link so that you can connect with one of our New Life Ambassadors who will pray with you and walk you through your next steps. If you're saved but don't have a church home, we love to welcome you into the BGC family. Just text BGC Join to 757 87 and someone will reach out to connect with you. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the ways in which you met us in worship. And now, God, as we look to go into another week, our prayer is that you will continue to be with us, that your face and your light will shine upon us, that you will be gracious unto us. God, allow us to continue to walk in your light. Give us the strength, the faithfulness to continue to let our light shine so that people may see your good works and glorify you, our Father in heaven. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.